There are a lot of ways to recreate the feeling of depth on a flat surface because that's what we're doing when we're painting and drawing. But today I want to focus on aerial perspective or atmospheric depth, we also call it. And it is the depth that we see in nature. It seems that things in the background have way less color. They are more gray or more blue and the contrasts are way more smaller than the contrasts in the foreground. And that's not only contrasts in light and dark, but also contrasts in color. In the background there is way less color, it seems to be, eh? because it's from your viewpoint at that moment. But that's because there's atmosphere between us and the things we see. And the closer the things are, the less it gets interrupted, <laughs> so to speak. So we see more color and detail and light and dark in the foreground and way less color detail and differences in tonal values in the background. The more you look into the distance, the more the colors look similar to the surrounding, uh, the, the sky most of the times. So if the sky is blue or grayish blue, then you see that objects in the background tend to be gray or grayish blue. Uh, but of course there are always exceptions and when the sky is yellow or orange or pink or na you name it, then the objects in the background will lean more towards those colors. So that's always dependent on the situation. And that's very fun to focus on and to try to replicate that in the painting. So I'll show you in a short demo how you can approach it and make this short color study. And you can paint along if you like, link to the photo is in the description. Here in this picture you see it as well. You see a more detail in the foreground, more color as well. I have to say this whole picture hasn't got that much color at all. It's all a little bit uh, gray, but here is more color and more contrast. The darkest tonal value here is way darker than the darks over here, you see. Although we know that these are shadow parts, they are in total, they, the colors are lighter. They're closer to the background color of the sky. And in this picture, that's even, I think, the main thing why, why we see that there's depth. Yeah? Because you see, these colors gradually get more gray or bluish, the more you get in the back. First, let's pre-mix a sky color and the colors for the background. So it's all a little bit bluish gray. So I take a shortcut. I have this big jar of uh, grayish blue. But grayish blue contains the following pigments, titanium white, black and cyan. I, I just have a big jar of this, uh, of this paint and I almost never use it, but now it might come in handy. Then I grab a little bit of phthalo blue and I think I need some white. Cat yellow light, a little bit of magenta as well, quinacridone magenta. There we go. First, let me look at the sky. So this color, it is too gray for the sky, but I just grab a little bit of this color. I'll make it lighter with some white and then I'll add some extra phthalo, I think. So you see, you see, I don't want to run out of color, so I make quite a big pile of this color. So this is quite of all right. Here it gets lighter very quickly. So I grab a little bit of this mixture and I add extra white to make it even lighter. There you go. So you see this is good for a transition here. And here it gets even lighter. Grab some more white and a little bit of this mixture. And then what do we have? A slight touch of yellow, I think. And a little touch of... A little touch of magenta as well. So there we go, and now it's, it's still slightly to the light side, so I'll add a little bit more of the blue mixture. To darken it a little bit. Yep, okay. I might do this wat the water as well, because the colors are quite similar. So if I look at the darkest sky color, so I grab a little bit of this color for the lightest color on the water, and I grab a little bit of this light part. I think that will be 
quite right. Yes, it's quite right. It can use a little bit more of yellow, slightly. So this is my lightest part. You see? With the palette knife I check all the time. Then I need a darker part. I'm not gonna do it too precise, the whole painting. It's just an indication, but all colors work together, so yes, that's good. And now an even darker mixture, more phthalo in it. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so we have three main colors. I will start with the water because the piles of paint for the water are less big. So this will dry more quickly than these piles. So that's why I start off with this one. I start with the lightest values. It's uh, in the back a little bit, so I use a quite a, a rather small brush. Drop in this color. So up. Okay, and then it gets darker. And then over here, sometimes you have a lighter part, but we can do that uh, later on as well. Over here we all we see this lighter color around here and then it goes a little bit like this. Oh, almost took the wrong color and then it is uh, more something like this. Grab a bigger brush, this is a bigger plane. Otherwise it takes hours and hours if I do it with that small brush. Now I grab some paper towel and clean the brush a little bit. But the smaller brush I will clean a little bit more. So you see the smaller brush I clean thoroughly because I'm not gonna use it uh, anytime soon and uh, the acrylics dry really fast. Now I grab the darker color and I just put it over here in between those two colors don't want to blend too much at this stage just put it at the place where it's needed and just try to make it a sort of a color study you don't have to do all the details and all the stuff it's about the colors working together that gives that sense of, of depth and that is what we want to study with this painting so that's my goal eh, for this painting. Now I grab some of this darker paint at one side of my brush and a little bit of the lighter paint at the other side of the brush. And then I wipe them together like this. I repeat it, dark side over this, lighter paint in this side of the brush and then I go over it. Oops, I have to do it right of course. So. So to just make it slightly more smooth, the transitions. Now I wipe off the excess of paint. Then I head over to the darkest color and I see it at some spots. I just add it a little bit freely. It doesn't matter that much. I wipe off the excess of paint and I'll take the smaller brush, the, the clean brush, and I'll add some lighter parts in the darkest part here. So over here you see something like this. I just leave it like that. Now I head over to the sky. So I clean the small brush because I won't need it. There you go. So Now I head over to a big brush for the sky. And I will start with the lightest color around the mountains. Just uh, drop it in at the edges like this. And from here on it gets a little bit darker the sky so I'll stop there. And here I go like this. A little bit around the edges of the mountains. And just do it freely. It hasn't, doesn't need to be exactly as the photograph, 
again it's just the color harmony that we're looking for the colors to replicate that feeling of depth of aerial perspective then i wipe my brush clean a little bit on the paper towel see now i need a neat new one there we go and i head over to the slightly darker color and that's what we are gonna use most so i see it over here going like this and from here on it gets slightly dar more dark just use enough paint to cover the canvas see whoops one side of the brush i leave this color on other side of the brush i'll mix a little bit of the lighter version and then i wipe them together on the canvas just go over it so like this and i'll repeat darker color lighter color and smear them together so now i clean the brush again get rid of the excessive pain and i paint pain <laughs> uh, now i head over to the darkest color this one and we only need it over here we're going to repeat the same process again So there we go. I wipe it clean again. I put a little bit of the darker color on one side of my brush and the lightest, lighter color on the other side of the brush. So I have two colors on my brush. Now I'm going to wipe them together. And there we go again. Dark, light, and let's go on. That makes it easier to wipe them together. There are several ways you can do this. this. Today I want to show you this technique. And here again, dark, light, and there we go. You see, it gets very smooth. But if I want to drop the darker color a little bit more down, that's possible as well. But like that, I think... Hmm. Well, I think I've used a little bit too much of the dark color. This is a little bit too much exaggerated. So I'll just drop in more of the light color. There we go. And then I'll do it the other way around. More light color. And again, more light color. And here I'm gonna blend it a little bit, so. So you see, there's always a solution for when things go wrong it's no problem and of course you can also as well wait and let it dry and go over it again but, but this is more to my liking it's a little bit less exaggerated i clean the brush because now we're gonna pre-mix other colors so that will take some time and i don't want the paint to dry in my brush so and now i'll wet my brush so more paint com will come off now and my water stays clean this way. I don't want to pollute the water too much. So repeat this process until hardly any paint comes off your brush. And then you can do the rest with water here. I'll do it extra loud so that you can hear it in my water jar. jar. So, good. These were small piles of of paint so they have dried a little bit so I'll remove them but the paint over here I can reuse so I'll just put this all in one pile like this and then I want to clean up my palette a little bit more so there we go I wet it a little bit then I can easily scrape it off with the palette knife So, painting is always a lot of cleaning. <laughs> Stop.
So. Now, let's repeat the process. I have a little bit of this uh, base color, this, uh, how do you call it, uh, bluish gray. And when I look at this, you see mine is a little bit too purplish compared to that. Oh, I need more yellow. But uh, yeah, when we think of painting, we always think of painting on the canvas. But most of the work we do on the palette. But now the fun starts. Uh, because we also see some slightly lighter parts. In the background, the farther away it is, the contrasts get smaller. So the contrast in color, but also the contrast in light and dark. So here we see a lighter part and that, uh, we see it at other spots as well. I want to make this color because I don't, I'm not going to make every, every tiny little color that I see, but I just take some main colors. But you see, it's slightly lighter, but it is very, very subtle. If you look very carefully, you see that these air, if you look through, if you squint your eyes, you hardly see the difference. So it has to be a slightly, slightly lighter. So I take this color and I add a little bit of white. Well, this is quite all right. Okay. And the color is quite all right as well, right away. So it can use a little bit more of the magenta, I think. Yes. Okay. So let's make a darker color for over there. I just grab this, a little bit of this and a little bit of phthalo again. There we have it. We have a slightly darker color than that, but maybe this is right already. Uh, it's not that bad. I'll leave it like this, like this. Okay. And then we have this kind of beach color. It's even lighter. So I'll grab some more white. But you see how gray everything is relatively. When you see it on the palette, you see only all kinds of gray colors. First I'll do the beach, I'll grab a small brush, take the lightest color over here and put it over here. So the lightest color there, that beach color, looks a little bit similar to my canvas color. So that my canvas is also gray. So you can hardly see it, I think, but that's it. So. I wipe it clean a little bit and I grab the lighter color. So there you go. So now I go over to this color for the darkest parts in this mountain. So I'll just drop it in for all these parts. Just to keep it simple. Just to show the effect of these gray colors all with each other. I'm not gonna stick too much to the photo. Oh, wrong color, oops. Just want to show what it does. And there it gets slightly lighter, so I leave that alone a little bit. So here we go like this. Just keep it simple. Simplify the painting the, the, the photograph for yourself. So squint your eyes and say, okay, this is a big plane. Here it gets a little bit lighter again. So this is mainly the darkest part. Now I clean my brush a little bit again and I go over to the lighter color for these details like here. It's just at some spots. See, again, I just used the photo a little bit as reference, but it's the color study that I'm after. It's not the precision, but I just want to add some of these colors here, just to indicate sort of what we see. So these are the lighter parts, go over like that. 
Here it gets, it all gets slightly lighter. So there we go. Then I grab this lighter color because I can use it for this part as well. And in this part, we get even lighter colors of the snow, but still. Oh, here I messed up. This is the, the wrong mountain. <laughs> it needs to be this one. I'm sorry. Doesn't matter. We can go over it. But here we, I use the same. The lighter color from this mountain I use for the darker color for this mountain. Because they are very similar and I can do that here as well. Uh, at some parts. Mm, there we go. Here at the mountains you have some shadowy parts. See. And, and for the rest we will add a lighter color for the snow over there shortly so yeah this is quite dark that's good so let me add this here this I will adjust shortly but here the shadow colors the, the rocky parts are a little bit more of these kind of tonal values so there we go So now I'll make a slightly lighter color for these parts. So I I can use this one. You see, it's almost good enough, but it's a little bit more blue. So I'll add a little bit more cyan or uh, phthalo blue. So snow is uh, also a funny thing in shadows. You see, snow is sometimes very blue. And that's because the shadow color reflects the sky color and the sky color is that kind of blue so it looks very similar to the, the color of the sky uh, okay uh, we all know that white is a very reflective color and snow is white so there you have it so now i go on with this color for here you see so it's more a little bit of blue and now it may look weird but if everything goes well in the end it will look logical because then we also have the lightest parts and other kind of in-between parts you see but now it doesn't work that well because we're not been everywhere yet here as well in the shadows I will add some of this bluish color just to add some variety here in it and here at this side of this mountain, well there it gets slightly lighter still, so I'll add a little bit more of white. Just ever so slightly. Yeah, so here, here it gets this mountain, this, this, these colors are a little bit more slightly lighter again. And then here it gets even lighter, so I'll add more white and a little bit of magenta, just a little bit. There we go. Now here we have all kinds of things going on, uh, like this, okay. Then I wipe my brush clean again and I'll add some of the lightest part, the snow parts. What kind of color is the white? Because white isn't always white, you see? So it looks very similar to my titanium white, but it lacks a little bit of, a little touch of uh, magenta I add, I'll add. And maybe some yellow as well but i'm gonna compare yeah slight slight touch of yellow so so it is a little bit a warm kind of white there we go now we just put it at the correct spot so here we see a part and here maybe you see where the light hits the rocks i just uh, i'm not that I just use the photo as a general ID. So 
So, and of course, you see all kinds of variations and things going on, but uh, first put in this kind of stuff. Here, uh, to be honest, the white is a little bit less white, because, but okay, we get that to that later on. Here we'll add some white. This is very bright there, over there, so I like to add that as well. And here, so here we see a sort of a cloud. I'll first do the top side, a little bit white. Then I grab some, a bit of this, of this bluish color. And I just wipe it through each other like this. So there you go. Uh, but uh, what did I say? Yes, not everything is as white as I did here. So now I'll make a sort of... I'll grab a little bit of this blue and I'll add that to the white mixture. And now I go over to the parts where there is a slightly bl more bluish... Uh, yeah, more bluish white, so to speak. There. No, something like that. And uh, over here we had that as well as well. This is even more bluish. So 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 a part in between these sh so sh slight shadow parts. We see that here as well. Some of these shadow parts. You see, but it isn't that much effort. We got all kinds of colors on our palettes, so we can easily, freely fill this in. Okay, now here we also have some snowy parts, but they're not that bright white, so I'll use a mixture that is slightly more blue. Here as well, I see another one. Well, I think that's enough. We don't have to overdo it as well, because it is background, it is scenery. So it's also, so it's always very important to just continue painting to cover the whole canvas with one layer of color, because now you cannot see that it, 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 if it works or if it doesn't work. You can only see it in comparison with the other colors and contrast in the foreground ground that we will start adding now. So now it's the same process for the foreground. I'm gonna pre-mix some important colors. Um, let's start with the background mountain over here. It's, it's kind of gray. I don't know exactly what kind of color it is. And if you don't know it, then it can be difficult to mix, of course. But then, on the other hand, if you don't know what color it is, it is a sign that it is probably, uh, it contains a lot of gray. So what I'm gonna do is I'll grab a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of ultramarine to make a gray color. So I'll add a, lot of, a little bit of white. And you see, it's kind of grayish brown color in this case. And if I compare, oops, it's almost quite all right. So <laughs> there you go. That was easy. And again, I'm not gonna bother too much about exactly the right colors because yeah, it just would take too long for this example. But now we have more darker colors there as well. So I use the same mixture, but I'll add some more ultramarine and more burnt umber. See, so also in this case, the tonal values are quite close to each other. You see? But the color is slightly different. Then I'm gonna make some main color for this part and I've grabbed some yellow ochre. I think I can adjust yellow ochre to a color like that by adding, first adding some burnt umber. Now I'm gonna lighten it up with a little bit of white because then the color gets duller as well and that's also what I need. But there are other things that are lacking so Let's compare again. We're getting a little bit closer. 
It's a little bit too vivid, so I'll add a little touch of ultramarine to make it more grey. Then here it gets even lighter, so we can use the same mixture. I think it gets maybe more yellow as well, but we'll, we'll try. Just uh, grab more white and lighten it up. Yeah, we're getting close already. Now, then we see some darker parts. I'll use these colors that, uh, for that, I think. I'll adjust it at, uh, at some spots. I'll grab a little bit of this mixture and I'll take a look if I make it more towards the brown side. So I'll add more burnt umber. Then I think already very quickly we are there. So it's nothing else than... Uh, ah, it can have a little bit of magenta as well. So here we go. Yes, it was a little bit of a warm, warm color, strangely enough. Okay, then some of these things. I just grab this hmm. and a little bit of magenta. I think yes it is and then slightly lighter. Then we have some parts that seem more green like but let's not get confused because most colors are quite gray. So I'll again I'll mix ultramarine burnt umber for a kind of a base color. I'll add a little bit of white to make it slightly lighter. And you see how brown it looks on the palette and how green it looks on the photograph. So this is very very odd. That's what you sometimes have. So let's get started. First the mountain that I've messed up. That's this color, the lightest color uh, that was over here. See, I completely destroyed it. So, more like this. You see, wipe off the brush and grab the slightly more grayish color, the darker color. For here. There we go. Up. There we go. I want to continue with this color first. Uh, just put it in as a base color. Again, we just paint big planes. But you see, it gets more colorful already and it starts working already. Now I grab a little bit of this more grayish color and I mix it through this color. There we go. I just grab this more grey color to put this in. See, so. And here, yeah, I don't want to be too detailed, but you have all kind of details, of course, there. Well, let's drop in some of these trees. I'll just grab some black in this case and a little bit of ultramarine. And I'll add a little touch of yellow ochre. So I just uh, drop in uh, some dark colors for the trees. I will uh, adjust the, the, the lighter side of the trees later on. But first I just want to sketch them in, so to speak. So here's a row of trees. And here in the background, I'll take a slightly lighter mixture. There you have some trees. Now I head over to this dark part here. I just grab some black and a little bit of yellow ochre. See, whoop, 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 dark. I just look at this as a dark plane, all these trees over here. On top, I want to add to make it more green. So I'll add more ultramarine and a little bit of yellow ochre. And I put that on top here. It's a little bit too transparent, first layer. I'll cover it the second time. Then, that dark, crazy color here. That's a little bit of magenta. Shadow part over here. Now I go over to this light color. I'll just drop it in and I will adjust it where needed. 
but this is a kind of a base color again so over here we have this part that rock part that sticks out like that so there we go And that's one of the things why landscapes are fun to paint because with landscapes you can quite easily make it more abstract. Now I'm heading over to the mysterious uh, brownish colors for over here. Just a little bit like this. See? Some spots a little bit. So now already, uh, you see, I mix it a little bit through the, the, the color that I have. That's no problem. So just to indicate a kind of a pattern of grass and bushes, that kind of stuff. Here it gets more green. So a little bit of this mixture through it. Yep, and I make it a lot, way more darker, you see, already. And now at some spots I just indicate a little bit of this vegetation. Just at some spots then I do the shadow part of that rock as well of that piece that's standing out here so there we go and then you have a cast shadow over there so let's continue over here a little bit of this I will do this more precise now. There it goes like this. There we have something like this. Then I wipe my brush clean a little bit. Then I go over again to that light color for the inside of the corner here. It's a little bit light. See? Then I grab my a gray mixture for the road. Something like this. Yeah, here it gets uh, quite difficult because of all the shadows, cast shadows that are projected onto the road. So this is first a little bit too, too dark maybe. If I squint my eyes, yes, no. I'll add a little bit, little bit more of white to it, wet and wet. Here I grab some of this light mixture and I'll add a little bit of this gray stuff through it. So we get a slightly darker color. It has to be a little bit more neutral, so I'll add a little bit more of blue. See, so there we go. So a little bit, little bit different color over here to give it some variation. A little bit over here, a little bit over there. There we go. A little bit more brown over here. So more uh, burnt umber I've put through it. And here stuff like this happens. Now again, I grab my slightly bigger brush again. And I'll put in these other different colors, this gray color with more magenta in it. There we go. Here as well, some spots. And I do it a bit roughly. Yeah, and with landscapes, that is often the case. It's, uh, it's about layering. Yeah? So you can build on top of the layers that you've already painted. So now here, for instance, I can add a little bit of lighter versions on top of the grass. 
so, but the previous layer does its job. You see, it shines through at some spots and it works together with what I'm doing now. More detail in the foreground, more contrast. That's what we are doing now. So here we go, for instance, these trees over here. You see now they cover. So now we get a dark part here in the foreground and that dark part immediately and the, the cast shadow, the shadow here as well. Now the second time when I add it, you see it gets really dark and we need that for the sense of, of depth in our painting. Now we have big contrast in the foreground and on top it's more lighter green, a little bit yellow, yellowish green like this. There we go. So there we have contrast and same goes for here. At some parts you have some of these shadowy colors over here. So these kind of things will add up in the total picture as well. Very nice to do is make some slight variations in this rather dull color that I've used uh, for here overall, uh, overall. So now I can say I'll add a little bit more of white, for instance, to make it slightly lighter. And then for here, for instance, at some spots, you see more of a lighter version of this color. And maybe here at some spots. And at other spots, you see the same color, but with more color in it, for instance. So here it gets more of that yellow. So I'll add a little bit of yellow, uh, a little bit of magenta as well, I think. So slightly warmer. So, so this is slightly warmer and uh, well, then you get as well, get more detail and more, more that vibrant feeling things starting working together. And uh, here, for instance, it gets more orangey. So same color, but we adjust it a little bit with more magenta and a little bit of the yellow. Yeah, there we are. I think something like this. So that gets a little bit more warm and then it will stand out more. And over here we have some more colors, more colorful as well here in between. So there we go. So some slight adjustments in color in a next layer. Can make a lot of difference. And we can do that a little bit in the background as well here, for instance, some lighter parts. Here is a little bit lighter and there you see some lighter parts well. So this one is quite dark. This one is quite dark at the sides and here I have, yeah, it's more like this. Okay. And then we have some trees over here, but they get lighter and I'll just add more yellow ochre to my black mixture for the lightest side of the trees here. But that's already enough, I think. Don't overdo it. I'll add some yellow ochre, extra yellow ochre at some spots. So there we go. And again here last time, but Still, it can use a little bit more color over here. There we go. So, but I hope it makes sense uh, that you, when you put more detail in color and in contrast in the foreground, and you see, I don't even uh, paint all kinds of branches and uh, grass and that kind of stuff. It's just small color planes, but still it works. 
This looks closer than the mountains in the backside. And it's all because of the aerial pers perspective. I hope that was helpful. Uh, uh, enjoy painting and I'll see you next time.